Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course on Windows 7 Backup. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at the requirements from the Configuring Backup and Recovering Options section. We're going to configure backup in this video. We're going to create a system recovery disk, backup files, folders, or a full system, and show you how you can schedule backups in your Windows 7 operating system. The backup feature of Windows 7 is very comprehensive. You can backup in the entire disks. You can backup certain files. You can keep versions of the files in your backup and recover them separately later on. A lot of capabilities. And you can configure this manually through the GUI. From your control panel, you can choose Backup and Restore. And all of your configuration settings are right in there. You can backup files and folders and save all of those pieces. It uses a technology called Shadow Copy, which means that if even if you're currently using that file, it will take a shadow copy of the file and save that file off to your backup. That way, files that are open don't get missed or don't get skipped. And with older technology, those files simply were never backed up. And that was a bit of a problem. The shadow copy technology gets around those issues. It's not going to back up by default any system files, any profile settings, anything that's in your recycle bin, any encrypted files, or any temporary files. If you need to back those up, going to have to tell the Windows backup process explicitly to go to those sections and back up those files. Otherwise, those files will just simply be skipped from the backup. Another type of backup you can do is one of the entire hard drive, a system image. What's nice about the system image is that it backs up everything. And on Windows, it stores the backup as a VHD, a virtual hard drive. Well, if you recall from our earlier videos on VHDs, this is a very flexible format. And it allows us to get in there and even boot from that VHD if we wanted to if you're using Windows 7 Ultimate or Windows 7 Enterprise. So think about that. You could back everything up to a VHD. Then your system crashes. You could go to another computer, simply copy the VHD. You don't even have to re-image the system. Copy the VHD file over and tell Windows to boot from that VHD. And now you're back up and running again very, very quickly. A lot of flexibility there. And having it a VHD file gives you some options that normally would not be available to you. One thing you have to keep in mind is you must back up to an NTFS partition. Normally, this isn't too big of a problem. But if you have a drive out there that's used by other operating system and it's a FAT-based disk system in that drive, it's not a good source not a good destination to use, rather, for a system image on your backups. You can also initiate this system image from the command line. This is the command line WB admin, the Windows Backup Administration. You can start it with the backup, and you give a backup target and tell it what to include. And if you do a dash quiet, you'll also never hear anything from the backup. It simply starts in the background and continues to run, and the end user may not even know what's going on. You can also schedule this to occur very normally with the Windows Task Scheduler. We used the Windows Task Scheduler in a previous video. We can simply add our backup process to that as well. And then you can be assured that the Windows backup is going to occur every day or every week or every month exactly the way you'd like. You'll find all of your Windows 7 backup information in your control panel. There is an option there for Backup and Restore. And if you choose that, you'll have the option in there to change, modify, set up any of your backup settings. You can see I've already configured a backup on my computer that goes to a location of E colon. That's my drive that has all of my backups on it. I've got 30 gig of disk space. It tells me how much I've used. I can even change the amount of disk space that's being used on that, that particular store. I have 77.85 mega, megabytes of data files. I've got an 8.98 gig of a system image. I've got other files out there, amount of free space. And then you can remove old backups from there if you wanted to use some of that disk space for other things. You can also change the options on what's going to happen during the backup. Let's change our backup settings. It's going to start up the backup front end for me and tell me that I'm doing drive E for this backup. I could also choose to save this on a network as well. If I double click that, you can say to let Windows choose what's backed up. Or I could just let me choose what's backed up. And I can specify myself what items I would like to include what items I would not like to include in this backup. 
Notice that as part of the backup, you can also include a system image of the drive. And I chose to do that as well. That way, if I need to go back and simply retrieve a file that might have been deleted or changed, I can do that from the normal backup. If I want to go in and grab the entire system image and perhaps boot this hard drive somewhere else or re-image a hard drive, I can use the image that was created. Either way, I'm covered. I feel like I've got a very good set of backups that I can use to do whatever I need to do should I need to go back in time and recover some of that information. Not every drive can be a backup location. There's only certain types of drives and certain types of media that qualify to be a, a backup location for the Windows Backup Program. One is a CD-ROM, or the one-time writable CD-ROMs. This is not referring to the CD-RW that you can read and write too often. This is just the write once and read many times CD-ROM. Also, DVD-ROMs, the same thing applies there. I can use the one, write one time C DVD but don't use rewritable DVDs. Those won't work for Windows Backup. Windows Backup won't even use that type of media. You can, of course, use a hard drive. That's where many people commonly will back up, especially since you can get these external devices that simply plug in via USB or via FireWire. Makes it very, very easy to back up. Notice you can also back up on an internal hard disk so that you can just slide another drive into your computer and use that as your backup drive. You've also got network locations that you could use assuming that you're using Windows 7 Professional, Windows 7 Ultimate, and Windows 7 Enterprise. The home systems will not use a network location to back up. So if you were thinking of putting some of that network attached storage in your house and the prices on those things are dropping rapidly, you must have those particular versions of Windows to take advantage of those as backup locations. And lastly, you can't use tape drives and you cannot use flash drives as backup locations. If you go and look at your backup drive, you'll see there's a different structure there for files and folders versus a system image. If you look at the section where we're storing the files and folders on your backup media, you'll see a folder that has the computer name on it. That's useful because many different computers might be storing information on that backup drive. And with that folder there, you'll know exactly which one is associated with which computer. Full backups are done into a folder, and it makes multiple zip files for versioning inside of that. So if you ever need to retrieve those and offline simply retrieve them outside of the Windows program, you can simply unzip them and get access to that information. Now there's also something called a catalog that is saved. That catalog is within the backup that stores where the files are that are for that backup, just like the name implies. You can go to a file called globalcatalog.wbcat that has the catalog for everything within the backup. System images are stored in a similar area. They're in a directory called Windows Image Backup. And it's important to note that whenever you do a system image, it's going to overwrite the information in the previous one. There's only going to be one system image, and it is simply updated every time you store that image information out there in that image directory. The backup's going to handle all of that for you, but you can't go back to a previous system image from a number of weeks ago or a number of months ago if an image has been done since then. There's only one image, and that's the only one that you can restore from. If we go out to my backup folder, this is my E drive that has my backups on it. Here is the folder that has Atlantis Lab PC. That is where my files and folders are saved. Remember, it's saved in the name of the, of the machine that was used on, during the backup. If we double click, it says, choose an option below for the selected backup. Restore my files from this backup, restore files for all users, or manage the space used by this backup. So by simply double clicking on it, it brings up this Windows backup so that it can walk you through. It assumes you want to be walked through the wizard to be able to do something with this. If I right mouse click and choose Open, I get some different options. I go into this folder, and you can see there is a backup set that was created on the 11th, and I have a number of backup files associated with that. There was a backup on the 11th, on the 17th, and on the 18th, and you can see the backup files are simply compressed zip files, and you could look into that zipped folder to be able to see exactly what's inside there, and I'm going to choose the administrator folder, and here's the information, simply drilling into it using that uncompression capability built into the Windows Explorer to see exactly what's in here. And since it's already part of the Explorer, if I need to grab one file, I can just grab it and drop it right onto my desktop or somewhere else, and I've just pulled it right out of those file backups. The image backups are stored in a different place. If we go back out to our backups folder, 
And right here off the root is a Windows image backup folder. And there's my Atlantis Lab PC. And you'll see there's different folders here. We have the catalog folder. I don't have permission, so I'm going to click Continue. There's my backup global catalogs and my regular global catalog. And then you have the backup files themselves. And if I expand this out, notice that you have a number of support files. But here is a 7.7 .7 gig file that is the VHD file. There is the virtual hard drive that I could take and then move to another computer and boot directly from that VHD if I was running Windows 7 Ultimate, Windows 7 Enterprise. And now I've got all of that information that was on my computer all self-contained on that single VHD. If you ever do find yourself needing to recover information from your system, you may need a recovery disk. You can build one of those if you go to your control panel right here under your Backup and Restore, you have an option to create a system repair disk. And if you have a CD-ROM, I don't have one in this computer, but if you have a CD-ROM, it will burn a CD-ROM boot disk that you can use to boot the computer that can then access the image that you've backed up and restore that image to your computer. So it's like taking this backup and restore functionality, sticking it on a DVD-ROM that we can boot from, and then gain access to our images. Very, very simple and very easy to create right here from the GUI. You can, of course, manage your backup schedule from this graphical interface as well. If we go to the Control Panel, we can choose the Backup and Restore. And there is an option in here to change the settings you have for the schedule. And if we start up Windows Backup, you can change exactly when this is going to occur. You can see that if we double click on Backups and let Windows choose the information that we have here, you can have an option to change the schedule right down here. This is now set to every Sunday at 7 PM. If we ch click Change Schedule, you can run it daily, weekly, or monthly on a particular day, week, or month, and the time of day that you'd like to run it. So instead of going to the command line or modifying things manually, go right here to this front end in the Backup and Restore module and change everything right there in the graphical interface. Let's review some of the things we've learned in this module. Our first question, what kind of format is used by Windows Backup to store system images? Well, if you recall, we were just looking at those image files. And they were stored as a really big file that was a virtual hard drive file inside of Windows. The next question, what kind of format is used by Windows Backup to store files and folders? Different kind of backup there. And if you recall, we were able to drill right into it and see what files were in there because it was in a compressed zip format. And our last question, what media can be used for Windows Backup? If you recall, there were certain kind of media you could not use. And what was left over were the CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, hard disk with an NTFS disk format, and a network location. That covers our requirements for this module. We've gone through the creation of a recovery disk, how we can back up files, how we can back up folders, and do a full system image backup as well. And we talked about scheduling backups using command line and combining that with the scheduler to be able to make sure that our backups occur every day. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.